Okay, this is 7EE1, 7th grade, Expressions and Equations 1, Video 1. We're going to be looking at something called Linear Expressions today. We're going to be moving some items around, manipulating them. Okay, a few terms to know. I'd like you to copy these down in your journals and define them, please. All right, this is a algebraic expression. It's an expression because we don't have an equal sign. Now, if it had an equal sign, we would be calling this an equation. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about certain parts of this number sentence, I guess we can call it also. Um, again, we don't have an equal sign, better known as an expression. So if I'm identifying coefficients, that means I am looking for an integer that is attached to a variable, literally stuck to the front of a variable. So if I'm going down the line right here, I see that I have the variable called x. Now if I'm looking to the number or integer that is stuck to the x, it is invisible. It's right here in front, so you say, how many x's do I see right here? I see 1x. So my one of my coefficients is called 1. Now, do I have any other coefficients down the line? Looking for variables, I see an x. And the number that is uh, stuck to the x is this negative 2. Now, don't forget about the negative sign. So you take the sign in front. So this is a negative 2 coefficient. The next part are the constant terms. Now the constant terms are the integers in the line that don't have a variable attached to it. So if I'm going from left to right, I can see a 4 and I can see a negative 10. So right now we're just listing these items. The reason why we're listing these items is because in this chart, in this flip chart, you're going to find out that we are going to have to put terms together. Uh, we're going to have to simplify these expressions and put these like terms together to kind of shorten the length of this expression. So looking for the like terms, I know that I have variables that are called x. So the like terms would be positive 1x and negative 2x. The other like terms are the constant terms known as 4 and negative 10. So let's move on. This is just kind of uh, identifying certain terms in an expression. I think on the next slide, we have uh, one property that we're going to be looking at. So before we start listing the coefficients, constants, and like terms, I see a set of parentheses in this problem right here. Now, if we were following the order of operations, we would try to get this w and negative 4 together. Now, had w been some integer, I could do the math inside of the parentheses first. However, I don't know what w is. I have a 5 that's touching the parentheses, 5 touching the parenthesis or grouping symbol means we multiply. So I have 5 multiplied by the quantity of w minus 4. So that means I need to use my distributive property. So my distributive property says take the 5 and multiply it by each term on the inside. 5 multiplied by w is 5w. And 5 multiplied by negative 4 is negative 20. And I just bring down my other terms of the expression because they are not in the parentheses, so we haven't done anything with them yet. And again, the uh, property we just use is called the distributive property. I'm sure you've seen that in your elementary school years. 
now that I have used my distributive property, I have this long line of terms in this expression. And according to the directions, again, I'm just going to be identifying or naming the different parts. First, the coefficients. I'm looking to see who's attached to the variables. I see a positive 5, and I see a positive 1. My constant terms are negative 20 <clears throat> and 8. And now I'm going to group these like terms. So I have my 5w and my 1w. Negative 20. Now again, that is going to be important when we start combining like terms, <clears throat> adding, subtracting, using our operations to simplify these expressions. And that's coming up. Here we have a word problem. It says a rectangular soccer field is 30 year, uh, 30 years, 30 yards longer than it is wide. Write and simplify an expression for the perimeter of the field in terms of the width w. So a couple of key words in here. We know that it's a rectangle. We know that we are going to be dealing with the length and the width of a rectangle. And ultimately, they want us to find the perimeter. Now the perimeter are, or the perimeter is the distance around this figure when we add them up. So the sum of all of the sides will get us the perimeter of this rectangle. Now a key number in here is this 30 yards. I know that this field is um, 30 yards longer than it is wide. So I don't know the width of the figure. So that is the terms of W. So if I don't know the width, I can label it W. What I do know about my length, which is this long side, I know that this length is 30 yards longer than the width. Well, if I don't know the width, I leave it as a variable, and I know that it is 30 yards longer than the width. So that would be W plus 30. Now we would like to write and simplify an expression. So the expression would be um, the sum of all of your sides. So if I were to write out all of the sides, I would have an additional w and another w plus 30. So let's add up all of those sides. So we would have a w plus a w, those are your widths, plus, because we're doing the perimeter, a length, which is w plus 30, and another length, the other side of, the, of your figure, which would be w plus 30. Now, that is a very long expression. I have another way that I can write this. You've probably seen it as 2L plus 2W. That would be 2 times my length plus 2 times my width. That would get me the perimeter of this rectangle. So I can go, how about 2 times my length plus 2 times my width. Now, if I were to simplify this expression, it says write and simplify, they would like us to get all of our like terms together. So if I'm looking at my first expression, I have a w, another w, a third w, and a fourth w. So I'm taking 1 plus 1 plus another one, 
plus a fourth one. So I would have 4w, and then I'll get a different color here for you. My constant terms, those were my uh, variable terms with the coefficient, my constant terms are positive 30 plus another 30. So we would have positive 60. Now, we don't know what the width is. We don't know the value of the width. So we are unable to figure out the actual perimeter of this figure. So the perimeter is equal to I don't know. If we did know a, a measurement of the width, we could substitute in our values and solve. Now just on a side note down here on the bottom, if you wanted to use your perimeter equation, we would have to distribute, use our distributive property. So we would come up with 2w plus 60 and another 2w. All right, combine your like terms. 2w plus 2w is 4w. And then you have your 60. So we get the same answer both ways. Now, according to the standard, we are going to be taking these addition, subtraction problems, these operation problems, combining our like terms. We're taking this expression and we are going to be putting our like terms together. And this takes us all the way back to the beginning of the year with adding and subtracting fractions. The only difference here is that we now have this coefficient term that is touching um, the coefficient, which is a fraction touching the x. So let's just, uh, we can line this up vertically. This is an addition problem. So I'm going to have 2 sevenths x plus 8. We're going to add that. This is the addition sign to our 3 sevenths x minus 4. Now this one, we don't have to worry about getting a common denominator because they already gave us common denominators. So we know that we can take our numerators and add them. So I have 2 plus 3, which is 5 sevenths x. We got our like terms together. We put our x's with our x's. And now we are going to combine our constant terms. So we read it as positive 8 added to negative 4. And we also recall our integer rules. So when we have a positive 8 and we add it to a negative 4, we come up with a positive 4. And there is your final expression. Now we can't put the 4 with the 5 sevenths x, I call them apples and oranges. If it has an x with it, it is different than the constant that doesn't have an x attached to it. So final answer, 5 sevenths x plus 4. Please define the given terms on page 2 of the flip chart. And write a few sentences on what you learned from this video if you have questions feel free to ask them and I will see you in class.